Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be setting up a home studio in a small studio space and we're going to start with backgrounds and background systems. So let's have a look at this one. This is one that I put together myself. Uh, the crossbar is basically two inch steel pipe, right? That's solid steel with one and a half inch steel pipe. Now what I did is basically drilled a hole in each end so I could attach it to the stands. Now you can buy pre-made crossbars and background systems. I decided to go with this after I kind of went with a cheaper, I think it was a three pole that you can join together. Uh, and it basically just collapsed because it wasn't strong enough to support the weight. So this is steel, it's not going anywhere. These stands are heavy duty and they go 12 feet high. Now this pole is five foot, the other one is seven foot. So that's 12 feet. But I need to leave at least a foot of overlap in the middle to support it. If I get under that, then I'm going to be stressing too much on the pole. So the more overlap you have, the better. The reason why it's that size and not bigger is because this fits in my car. So I can take it on the road with me. So this will create an 11 foot wide background, 12 foot high. The stands go 13 foot, but I keep it in 12. So 11 by 12 background. That's pretty big and it'll fit in my car. And it's small enough, fits in here. This is a seven foot ceiling. I don't need to go that high anyways. So on here, a lot of times I can just clamp right to the ceiling and I don't even need to use the stands. But I have this option here if I want. So hole drilled on each end of the pipe and it just goes on the center pin of the stand. Now the two inch pipe is too uh, thick for the normal pin. The normal pin is this that comes with your stand. and it's not big enough to come through here. So what I basically did was, I took a piece of copper pipe, set that there. So this is just simply a piece of copper pipe with electrical tape on the top to stop it sliding right through to the stand. And I drilled a hole in the front so that the pin goes into there and locks it in securely. So that's kind of what holds all this in place because this piping is heavy. That is one downside to it but it is not going anywhere. It is solid. Okay, let's talk about backgrounds now. You've got paper backgrounds that you can get on the roll and they can just slide them on here. Away you go and roll what you need. You can go to Fabricland or any of the fabric stores and buy off cut pieces of fabric and you can get different widths. Now a lot of times you're stuck at the four to five foot width mark, but if you're just doing headshots and tighter portrait stuff, works great. Here's an example of a piece from the fabric store. It's kind of got a cool wallpaper effect to that. That is pretty cool. Now I've got a couple of pieces of this that I can put together to create a wider uh, sheet across here and get a wider background if I need to. And there's nothing stopping you going this way with it. So you've got more width but not as much height. You can figure that one out yourself to which way you want to turn it. Now another option marine stores or fabric stores again, vinyl. You can get vinyl in all kinds of colors. I just stapled it onto this piece of wood because for me, I can clamp onto the ceiling with this and it makes it really easy. The rolls, all the tubing comes basically from the craft stores or marine stores. They give you, they get tons of them. But you can get this vinyl in all different colors. I've got it in this color, blue and a gray, and it can just hang on here. It's on the roll so I can just slide it that way or I can clamp it to it. And I'll show you how to clamp onto that in a sec. But vinyl, another option. So you've got paper, you've got cloth, you've got uh, vinyl. Now, if you have trouble with the cloth because of the wrinkles, steam it. I just hang it on here. If you add some weight, it'll fall out, especially overnight. Or if you're going to a client's place, I have a uh, steamer, it comes on a big stand, and I can steam big background in, in minutes. It doesn't take long at all, and it knocks out all the wrinkles, and I'm good to go. So another background here and I can hang black and I've got tons and tons of black. I can do about 40 feet of it. So anyways, this is a pre-made photographic background because this one has a pocket in it. So I can take the pocket and slide it down the tube. A lot of photo backgrounds come with that pocket just for that set occasion. I'm not going to use it. We're just going to simply clamp this onto here and do it this way. So I can just simply show you how 
I hang it. I just hang the material that way. These clamps, you can get them from, oh well, God, even the dollar store. I get them from the uh, construction stores, and you can get various sizes. Usually don't fight for the clamp. There you go. And this one I used in that fake barn setup. Uh, have a look. And I'll put a link down below to that, uh, that whole little shoot. But yeah, so this is a photographic background. Creates a wood wall. I can hang it either way on the support system. This damn stuff works great. It works in a nice small studio. And you can vary the uh, pipes depending on your own needs. This fits in my car. Does great. So I'm really happy with it. Any questions about it? Please leave it down in the comment section down below. And now let's get into light modifiers and into a lighting that I use, LED and strobe. Now we're going to be talking about lighting and light modifying. Now I did mention about LED lighting, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, links down below to the LED lights that I use and I'm using right now to light this. If I show you, then I'm going to be in the dark and I won't be able to show it to you. So it's easier just to show you uh, with the link down below. You can go check out the LED lights because honestly, I don't use them really for photography. I only use them for video work. I use studio strobes for all my photographic needs, basically. Uh, so that being said, let's have a look at the uh, studio lights that I use. Uh, here's one here. This is uh, an Alien B AB800 made by uh, Paul Buff. These are the uh, studio lights that I use. They're about a mid-level uh, studio light. The company does have about four, maybe five different ranges of lights and had some of the newer ones been out when uh, I was looking to buy, then although I love these, I would have gone up a notch or two and got just a bit better quality and a touch more power. Although this does come in three levels, the 400, the 800, and the 1600 in the ABs. But honestly, I love these. these. These work really good. They're portable, and there's so many accessories for it, uh, and so many light modifiers for it, and there's battery packs and everything else. So definitely worth uh, checking out if you want a budget-friendly uh, quality light. I love them, and I've been using them for years. So let's talk modifiers. First off, on this one here, we have uh, what's called a barn door, which allows me to angle the light. Now, the light coming out of here is hard. There's no diffusion whatsoever, but I can use these barn doors to direct and stop light and get light going where I want it to go. Very cool. So, you do have barn doors. Let's move that one out of the way. Then, <clears throat> this silver disc that's on the front, let me just grab these. These you can purchase for the uh, Alien Bees, and they are honeycomb grids. Let me just take one out and show you. And that's what it looks like. Ooh, very cool. So, this is a 10 degree, 20 degree, 30 degree, and 40 degree grid. So what it does is it takes that spread of light and narrows it down so you, you don't have light spilling which is hugely important in a small home studio. You don't want light bouncing around all over the place, which is what happens in my studio a lot. That's why I put black up on the walls on that to help stop light bouncing where I don't want it to, but the grids give me that finer control. So I do have grids available for these, which is very handy. Let me put these aside. Now, another type is this. It's a uh, like a soft box, but it's called a strip light because it's just small and narrow. Now I use this for rim lighting, back lighting. You can bring it all different angles. This stuff works great for uh, portraits and it works good for uh, food and portrait photography and product photography, I should say as well. So yeah, very handy. This is a strip box, great little device. Now let's bump it up a bit higher and this is what's called a soft box. This is a 40 inch soft box and these have the rings built on that work for the alien bees and they rotate so I can just spin this around which is very handy. So yeah this is a soft box and this is just held on by velcro if you're not aware of that. Yeah and inside is a silver reflector so it helps bounce the light around 
and it does come with an inner panel so you can get two layers of diffusion. So a soft box creates a nice, soft, even light. Very beautiful. Uh, very cool. I love using soft boxes. Now, let's get something a little bigger than your standard soft box. Let me just get this light out of the way and move this one in. I think we got off the hell in there. This is a 46, 47 inch uh, Octobox, as you can see by the shape of it. It's basically the same as the soft box that I showed you, except it's bigger and creates a different catch light in the eye. This also comes with a diffusible panel and it is silver on the inside as well. This, I'll just open this up. This is a collapsible one. The softbox I have there is not. This one is, I can undo all this and it's like an umbrella and it just folds up. And it comes with a very cool bag so I can store it. So that is very handy, especially if you're a traveling roadshow, portability is key. But this is about as big as I wanted to go within the home studio. Putting this close to the subject is a huge, huge light source and it creates beautiful soft light. So 47 inch softbox. Let me get that out of the way. Now the soft boxes, you can get uh, grids like I showed you the small round ones. These have grids available for them. The strip light, the soft box, the octobox, they all come with grids. It's just a cloth honeycomb grid and it puts it at about a 40% light spread. So you come from here down to about 40%. So you can help control a lot of that bouncing around. Okay, now one of my other favorite lighting modifiers is this, the beauty dish. It comes with this diffuser panel and there's your beauty dish attached to a studio strobe. Now I don't normally have it on the stand. I normally use it on a boom arm because it's normally up and overhead and it creates that beautiful, beautiful light uh, as like in this picture here. So you can create some really cool old fashioned style looks with this. And for beauty glamour work, gotta love this. This is a, I believe a 22 inch white beauty dish. You can get them in silver as well. So beauty dish, absolutely love, absolutely love it. All right, that's just a sample of some of the modifiers that I have and the studio lighting that I use. In the next part, we're gonna get into some of the other studio accessories that I do use and are very handy. Now, before we move on to the accessory part of the uh, video, I forgot to mention another light modifier I have, and that's the Lasta Light Highlight. I'm not gonna bring it out because it is six foot by seven foot. It's like a giant soft box. I will put a link in the description down below of a uh, video that I did using the Elastolite Highlight to create a fake window. So it'll allow you to see what the uh, Elastolite Highlight looks like. And I do use it for portrait work. Uh, it mimics window light uh, beautifully. And I don't mean creating a fake window, just having it beside and having that huge soft light fall on the model. Beautiful, beautiful light. So check out the link down below on the Elastolite Highlight fantastic piece of equipment and it folds up to about a three and a half foot circle and about that wide so you can pack it put it in your car and in a small home studio it's great to be able to pack it away now it does come in a few sizes mine is six foot by seven foot all right another thing we have here is a reflector now right now I've got this stripped down so it's a diffuser because what I've been doing is I've been using this to shoot my LED uh, newer lights through to help soften it for my videos when I'm kind of sitting at the desk setup. But with that, and that's about the uh, 40 inch, it does come with the uh, covers because it's like a five in one. So there's the gold, white, and it is reversible somewhere in here. So you've got white, gold, black, and silver for that reflector. Very cool, very handy, and it folds up to this little disc size here, which is very, very handy for a small studio. Now, another type reflector that we have, it's not really a photographic reflector, 
but it works beautifully and you get two in a pack. These are to go in the windshield of your car to stop the sun coming in and heating your car up. Supposedly shiny side out and bounces the light and black on the inside of the car. But these also spring roll so they fold up and you get a couple of them and they're cheap. Sometimes I use a black just for like a negative fill to come in on like this side of the face or something like that. But yeah, very, very handy. And it does work as a reflector coming up this way as well. Not as good as the other one, but it does work. Now, as you all know, if you've been following my channel, one of my big reflectors is this piece of white foam core that you get from the dollar store or any craft place. Put it up underneath beautiful light bouncing back up when you've got a light coming from above. Piece of cheap white foam core, always handy for product, food, and even for portrait work. Very, very handy. Now, what we have here is posing cube. And I have uh, three or four of these in different sizes. And you can have it sit like this. This one's actually made to go sit down on the ground more. There's the next size up I have, and these are three quarter inch solid ply. They're tanks. They're very, very big, heavy units, and they work wonderful. So these work great for sitting, doing your posing, put the other one down, and you can now rest a foot and pose. Photo noise. <laughs> so anyways, posing cubes. I do have a couple others that are bigger than this and quite a bit square, and they kind of stack into each other, so they're very easy for me to store in a home studio. Now, I forgot to bring it out here, but another chair that I have is an old computer chair. It's just one of the uh, cloth ones that had the, the back with the post on. I just simply took the post off, and I have the chair, and it raises and lowers. So it is ideal for portrait studio, and it's actually what I sit on when I'm in the YouTube studio, because I can raise and lower the chair and there's no back on it so nothing shows or anything getting in the way, which is fantastic. So these are some of my seating options that I have in the studio. Now, another accessory that's handy but not required, it used to be a lot bigger in the old days, a uh, posing table. Now this is not a posing table. You can get these at uh, Best Buy, Staples, Walmart, um, tons of places. It's just a like a computer table and this does tilt and tip. Now it is handy because of the tilt and tip that I can actually put my uh, handy dandy piece of foam core like this and it, when I raise this up I can bounce some light back up underneath so I don't have to have the model hold onto it. A lot of times though I just simply have the model hang on if I'm doing that tight headshot. So posing table works great. Also, you can cover it, and when you're at the right height, gives you something to lean on, or lean back on. So I can swing it off to the side, have it covered, and do it a pose like that. So these are some of the other accessories that I have within my home studio. Now, I went over everything really quickly. I didn't go into any real fine detail on anything, and I didn't get into the intricacies of how to use everything. I just wanted to show you some photographic equipment that is ideal for a small home studio. I mean, right up to a 47 inch Octobox. It folds up, umbrella style, so it's easy to store. And that's something that's key important in a small home studio, that you can pack stuff down. If you're not having a dedicated room, it's a room that you set up now and again for photography. It makes it nice that you can fold the stuff up and put it away. If you're leaving it up, wonderful. Now I do have a wide selection of uh, photographic stands. Uh, as you saw for the background ones here, these ones go up 13 feet. I've got others that only go up eight feet. So some are air cushioned uh, and stuff like that. But if you have any questions or comments or anything on any of the equipment or anything you've seen, please leave it in the description down below and I'll get to that for you. That's basically what I have for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a quick look at photographic equipment that works for a small home studio and does have some portability. So if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Hit that bell notification so you're aware when I post new videos. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. So until the next time.